Hi, I'm Darren. These are my hands, and look at all this great stuff that folks have sent in to me recently. I want to say again, thank you to people who have expressed interest in sending stuff into the channel for me to take a look at on videos. I just wanted to let you know, though, if you are thinking that you want to help out the channel, the best thing that you can do is watch the video and give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. And I would be really grateful if you would subscribe and hit that notification button. That's the absolute best thing that you can do to help out the channel. If you want to do more than just that, take a look at the YouTube page. There's an About tab. You can find out how to get in touch with me if you really want to. You don't have to send me things. You don't have to send money. If you want to, you can. But if you're watching these videos and you're subscribed, that's the reason I'm making these videos. Today, we're going to be looking at Sergio's Mad About Mad from 1970. Let's take a quick look. All right, Galactic Phrase Book and Sergio on Parade. Oh, goodbye, beautiful statue. Sergio Aragonez, Mad About Mad. Thank you, Bruce Duncan, for sending this in with a whole bunch of other really cool groove stuff. This is actually my only Sergio Mad paperback that I own. So thank you, Bruce, for getting me started on this. Sergio Aragonez, Mad About Mad. Don't flip these pages unless you're prepared to flip your wig. Published by Signet Books in 1970. Copyright 1970. When was this? The first printing, July 1970. So I know that this is a first printing because of the cover on the book. The very excellent Doug Guilford's Mad cover site has all of the Mad paperbacks on it and if you were to go there you could see the various covers that have appeared on this paperback over the years there have been i believe 16 different printings of this book seven by signet publishing and nine by warner signet has used this cover for all of its versions of mad about mad there's a different drawing on the warner covers and about five different colors. Blue, red, dark green, and purple. So, here's the front. Sergio Aragonez in a straight jacket, because he's mad about mad, with all his little characters around him. He's going cuckoo. And on the back, we read, Sergio Aragonez, who has been amusing mad fans for years with his hilarious borderline cases, referring to his marginal drawings, steps out of the margins and into the spotlight again with another collection of panto-mind-blowing gags calculated to drive you mad about mad. Panto-mind-blowing gags. Do you know what those are? I've never read those words before. I can only assume that they are mind-blowing gags in panto Mime. Pantomime? Pantomime? Okay, I get it. Pantomime blowing gags. Great. And when you're finished sampling the fun, you'll be mad about Sergio Aragonez. Hey, if you're on GrewTube right now, I know that you're mad about Sergio Aragonez already. New American Library publishes Signet Mentor Classics. How much was this when it first came out? 60 cents. Wow. I definitely pay 60 cents for this book. So that's the front and the back. I'm not going to read everything about this to you. But I will show you the foreword by the editor, Albert B. Feldston? Feldstein? Feldstein? <laughs> I'm looking at this saying, Albert B. Feldston? That's not who the editor was. The editor was Al Feldstein. Yeah, it is. Al Feldstein. I guess his name's Albert. Okay, so what we've got here for a foreword is one of those I don't have time, energy, or imagination to write a foreword besides nobody's going to read it anyway, so it doesn't matter what I print here type thing. 
At the very end, Al says, Boy, Sergio, you are one big pain in the neck. To hell with you. To hell with you? To hell with you. The hell with you. Not to hell with you. The hell with you. Okay. It's not an expression I use very often, so it doesn't make sense to me. Oh, by the way, Sergio Aragonez is one of Mad's funniest artists, an extraordinary talent, and a charming, wonderful guy. I'm mad about him. Aren't we all? All right. One thing about Mad About Mad and many of Sergio's Mad paperbacks is it's divided into sections. And each section has a title, for example, Mad About Children, and a little drawing. And Sergio includes himself in all the drawings. So smile, even though the little brat knocked you on the shin. Let's find the next one. Mad about the beach. Whoops, you tripped over the sandcastle. Oh, Daddy, he ruined my sandcastle. Oh, you spilt your ice cream on the lady. Her boyfriend's going to beat you up, Sergio. Look out. What else we got here? Mad about psychiatrists. That doesn't even look like that's how it's spelt. Psychiatrists. What do I know? Sergio is just pouring out his heart and his mind to his psychiatrist, who is bored out of his skull, throwing paper airplanes. Mad about dogs. I, I don't get this. Curb your dog. What does that mean? Does that mean don't poop on the sidewalk? Does that mean make your dog poop on the curb? What, what does that mean? I don't understand. Why is Sergio... Did Sergio just get thumped because this big guy stepped in the dog's poop? You know, sometimes this lowbrow humor goes over my head. Let's go to another section. Mad about protesters. Don't cut the flowers. It's funny because he got hit in the head. Hit him in the head. It's always a good joke. Everyone likes a good hit him in the head joke. I'll be right back. You know what? It doesn't matter that I do this. There we are. Hit him in the head. See? Mandatory grew. That's what we're all here for. All right. You go over here. Mad about demons. Look at he's shaving his legs. It's funny. Sergio's like a satyr. He's a devil. He's a goat-legged, horned dude shaving his legs because they're hairy. That's funny. Mad about public servants. Look at that guy. He's a garbage man with a hat and a badge. And he's throwing garbage cans around, waking up Sergio in the morning when he's trying to sleep. It's funny because he was woken up when he was trying to sleep. Whoa, flipped right to the right page. Mad about costumes. It's funny because Sergio was dressed as a bomb and he can't fit through the door to the costume party. It's funny. <laughs> It is funny. All right. Mad about shadows. These are always very clever. His shadow is laughing at him because he punched the wall and he hurt his... I think he would have hurt his fingers, but it looks like... Oh, yeah, I guess he did hurt his fingers. And he's holding them in his armpit because, you know, that's what you do when you hurt your hand. Stick it under your armpit. Mad about fairy tales. Here's Sergio telling the little kid a mother goose fairy tales. And it scares the little tyke so. And that's funny. All right. Mad about love. Oh, Sergio. Unrequited love. Why? Because there's a spider in your bouquet of flowers. All right. The end. Okay. Stop stealing the spotlight, Gru. Okay, I'm not going to be looking at every page of this book with you. You can go down to every local bookstore in every city that you ever travel to and look for Sergio's Mad Paperbacks. But one thing I do want to touch on before I maybe hit a few highlights of the book is Sergio's drawing style. This is 1970, so a lot of these are drawn in the late 60s. And when I look at it, I see a drawing style, and I want to be careful not to say that it isn't as mature 
as Sergio's drawing style, but it's different for sure. When we take a look at 1990s Sergio, at least drawing for Gru the Wanderer comics, let's see what we can find. Yeah, sure, this is good, nice and big. I'm thinking that his line style has changed a lot. In the 60s and 70s, his style was less, I want to say, cartoony, especially as we're looking over here. Maybe it's balloony is what I'm thinking. There are more pointed features in his characters, more angles. Perhaps it's just not as fluid of a drawing style. Maybe it's that his line work is thinner. And of course, maybe that has to do with the medium that he's drawing for as well. Here, let me grab another 1970s comic book by Sergio and we'll compare. I gotta flip this over. Here we have DC Superstars presents the wild and wacky world of Sergio Aragonez. This is 1977, but I think it is somewhat representative of Sergio's work in this era. I don't want to lose that page. <clears throat> That'll do. Again, when I look at this, I see thinner lines, pointier lines. Like, look at how thin his, his line work is here. Lots more shading and hatching used along here. I'm not speaking of this kind of stuff, but just little fine, little detail-y bits, it seems. Look at inside here, look at down here, look at on this big pipe, even on the bear. Stubble on this fella's face. Check out Sergio's hair here. All the hair on this ugly little kid. To me, Sergio is putting in lots of, not detail as in all the fun little hidden things that we like to see in a Gru comic necessarily, but I don't know, just thinner, sharper, scratchier drawing style. Now, maybe it has to do with the fact that he is drawing black and white comics and he's not able to do the shading, he's not able to do the coloring, so he's conveying those elements in finer line work. Perhaps that's what's going on, but it's definitely a different looking style to me in the 60s and 70s than in the 80s, 90s and beyond. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to take you through a few of the cartoons that stood out to me in Sergio Aragonez, Mad About Mad, and we're going to keep our eyes open for Grooze, Proto Grooze from 1970. So the first one that I want to call attention to is on page 18 here. This to me is a great example of a funny panto mind blowing gag. It's funny without any words, without even any animation in that there are no frames. It's just this one concept, this one idea, this one panel, this one page one little kid pointing to one particular fish that he or she wants amongst a tank of hundreds or at least dozens of identical fish. Oh, you want that one? Great, the guy says. No problem at all. I'll get that for you. The next gag that I'd like to show you is in this beach sequence. Ooh, there's a bum. And it's this one here that starts on page 29. So here we have the beach in the morning, and this section is roped off because of this mine. I was going to call it a land mine, but I guess it's a sea mine. What do you call those mines? It's one of those mines. It's on the beach. Stay away. <laughs> we'll have a rope around it so that you don't go there. Stay away. But what I wanted to look at here was... Sergio's consistency 
in his drawing of the people at the beach. So let's turn the page here. And as the people come filing in, we will see that we have like the same people. Like it's not that on every panel he just starts filling the beach up with drawings of people and we'll see how it works. There is a consistency. There is some consistency to this. For example, we've got on this next panel, this umbrella gets planted down in the corner with this fella who's reading his newspaper uh, with his sunglasses on on his beach chair. And there he is down in the corner on the next page too, right? There's an umbrella there. There's an umbrella there. These two lovebirds, you know, they're just gazing into each other's eyes on their blanket. And look at they're there as well. Let's keep flipping the pages. Lovebirds are there. Lovebirds are there. Dude with his newspapers there and there. What else can we see? Oh, we see the same guys napping down there. Same guys lying down there and there. Now, look at these dancers. Where the dancers come from? I remember seeing the dancers. So dancers, dancers. Oh, they're dancing there too. You know, it's really neat that Sergio takes the time to maintain the consistency in the beach scene here. Let's look at these folks out here in the water. She's in the water, calling back to her husband on the beach. Come on in. So he says, okay, in I come. There they are. Oh, that's not that great in the beach. Why? That, what, what's with that face there? Why is this lady sitting up all of a sudden? She was lying down there. And of course, this is not even looking at the gag itself. Danger. There's this mine here. People are looking at the mine. They're staying away from this section of beach that is roped off. Here come these people. They have no problem going in there. Well, that's dangerous, don't you think? Well, maybe this person is actually staring and looking at, at these people who are deflating the prop mine to reserve their spot. It's, it's a good gag, but the actual drawing is what really stood out to me here. Let's flip a few pages forward. Surfer dude, he's surfing the waves. We see the pier in the distance. He's surfing towards the shore. Here's the pier. He's surfing between supports of the pier. He looks like he's happy. He's got his tongue out. He's concentrating, but he looks like he's having a good time. I don't get the joke in this one. If you do, please leave a comment and explain it to me. It's too highbrow. All right. I'm going to the dog section next. Mad about dogs. Look at these little puppies here with the spots. Do they kind of remind you of baby Referto and baby Arfetto and baby Molefo and all of Referto's brothers and sisters? Hmm. Proto baby Referto. Maybe. Probably not. But it's fun to think that. And then over here, take a look at the shape of Fido's muzzle. I don't think he's got the referto ears, but he's got the referto schnoz. Mmm, proto-referto. Probably not, but it's fun to imagine it is. All right, let's find a Gru right up here. If you've got hippies, you might have Gru. Is that Gru with the headband and the big... Ah, it's a square nose, long hair. Oh, it's not Gru but it's kind of grew like Oh, how about this guy here? Look at that. He's almost got the nose. It's got the headband. It's got the long hair, beefy arms, skinny legs. No, I guess it's not really grew, but it's fun to imagine that the hippies are grew, eh? All right, let's flip forward to page 104. Look at this. Here's a devil down in hell, whistling for his dog, Cerebus with three bowls of food. Now that's clever. That's some highbrow humor. Very nice. Not so high that I didn't get it. I like that. I wonder if he sometimes calls his dog Fluffy. And of course, as a Canadian who can ignore a good moose joke, this devil doesn't have horns. He has antlers. 
Let's flip over to page 135 in the Mad About Costume section. Well, is it is it the actual gag that I find funny? Ha ha ha, the princess is telling jokes to the knight in shining armor, gives him the old elbow, and, and oh, it's, it's just a prop piece of art that falls apart. Okay, that's a, a bit of a funny joke. But check out the carrot costume. That's what I like best about this comic. Where does the body... How does a normal Sergio body fit inside a carrot costume like that? It just doesn't. I think that that's a real mutated carrot person being sneaking into the costume party to dance with the tomato. All right, on to page 157. Gotta skip so much of this. A lot of good stuff. Mad about fairy tales. Humpty Dumpty falls off the wall... He doesn't break his yolk. He doesn't become a scrambled egg. He hatches, and there's a giant chick in him. That's just bizarre. That's weird. Look, his legs are gone. Was that the chick's leg sticking out? There's so many questions that I don't have answers for here. This is not funny. This is a panto mind-blowing gag that has been calculated to drive me mad. I like this one. And on the next page, check out the dragon. I love Sergio dragons. So it's great to see a bit of a dragon here. It reminds me of Gru. All the dragons in Gru. I appreciate this drawing in this comic. One more up here. On page 166 and 167. Check out that dragon, eh? Here comes the knight to rescue the princess. The dragon's breathing fire. The knight deals a mortal blow. The dragon collapses. Here he is to rescue the princess. Or not. He goes into the cave and rescues the lady dragon. What's up with that? Again, I guess I just like the dragons. And how about this? How about the art in Alice from Wonderland's hallucination here? Now, of course, this is not Sergio's comic cartoon style art. This is just another style of art that Sergio does so well. And we see so rarely. It's beautiful. It looks like woodblock etching that could be in a 1800s printing of Alice in Wonderland. It's beautiful. Just take a couple moments to enjoy that. Wow. Sometimes I wish we got more of this kind of stuff from Sergio, too. All right, one last thing before I close things up here. When we read earlier that Al Feldstein, Feldstein, Albert B., edited Mad About Mad by Sergio Aragonez, I'm thinking, really, what does he have to edit in a book of pantomime cartoons? Is Sergio incapable of grouping them in sections? Did Al say, no, 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 you need to put this particular gag about demons with three-headed dogs before the gag about the demon that's growing antlers instead of horns? Is that why you needed an editor for this book? How about this one here? Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. And so she does let it down. And a pile of dandruff lands on the prince, makes a pile at the bottom of the tower. Was it Al Feldstein who said, Sergio, you gotta write in the word dandruff coming out of a thought balloon on the guy's head, else nobody's gonna understand what's going on. They're gonna say, why are those Cheerios pouring out of her hair? Nobody's gonna know what it is, Sergio. You gotta say dandruff. Is that what Al did? Was that his editorial contribution to this book? I don't know. Anyway... Sergio Aragonez, Mad About Mad. The end. I hope you enjoyed looking at this as much as I did. Again, thank you, Bruce Duncan, for sending this in so that I could enjoy it and share it with all of you. Remember, the best thing that you can do if you want to support this channel is to make sure that you're subscribed, that you have notifications turned on. Leave a comment below. Tell me what you think about Sergio's mad paperback books. How many do you have? Have you collected all the variant covers? If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. 
that's okay too. The algorithm appreciates all sorts of interactions. Remember, I'll be back again soon with another GruTube. And while you're waiting, why don't you check out this video here? Or maybe that one down there. Take care, everybody. And try not to go mad.